The final step is to have the background image display only after the transport sequence is underway. Right now the background image is on at the start. If you turn it off by clicking the background icon, you'll see that the particles that get color from layer still work. It looks like having the image turn on at around frame 23 is correct. Turn the image back on and double click the layer thumbnail, then set the start at project frame value to 23 and click OK. Now the image won't be visible until frame 23, right in the middle of the transport sequence where we want it. There are other ways to do this, like using a single particle and fade it in, or using an image sequence or movie that fades in as the background image. But this is the simplest. You may want to adjust the blurry fill particle visibility so it won't be so obvious when the image turns on. That's as far as we'll take this approach. It's not a perfect replication of the effect we wanted, but it's simple to use as it only uses two emitters. Let's do a bit more work and get better results. The main problem with the previous approach is that the spinners don't conform to the various body parts as they do in the reference clip. It's impossible to do that with a single emitter, so we'll use a different emitter for each body part. The blurry fill emitter can still be a single emitter, so we'll leave that one alone and only modify the other emitter. Actually, let's turn the blurry fill emitter off so it doesn't distract us. First, we'll want to see the background image all the time again, so double click its thumbnail in the layers window and set its start frame back to 1. Now remove the mask image from our emitter because it's no longer needed. We need to reduce the size of our emitter so it just covers one part of Spock. Let's start with his body. I suggest making the width of the emitter less than you think you need it so the particles won't be so spread out as you'll soon see. You'll probably want to reposition the emitter too. We want the spinners to cover the width of Spock's body so they appear to be orbiting him. But if we just increase the size, it's not quite what we want. We want them to be wider, but not taller. Right click on the Sparkles Particle Type Size property and uncheck Lock Aspect to get separate X and Y size controls. Increase the size X value to make the particles wider. I think the spinners are crossing each other too much, so in the Emitter Properties dialog, decrease the range of the particle angle. 30 looks better to me. While we're here, check the Apply to All, then Attach to Emitter options in the top part of the Particles page. We'll need this later when we change the emitter's angle. One thing I just noticed is that the reference point of the spinners doesn't seem to be in the center of the image. Click the Reference Point button and click the Center button. I also think the visibility of the spinners is too high, so reduce it a little. Looks pretty good, I think, so let's move on to the glow particle type. The glow is too hard to see right now, so increase its visibility, at least temporarily, and you'll see that the particles are concentrated in the center because the emitter is quite narrow. We can spread out the glows using a little trick with reference point and particle angle. Open the properties dialog and set the random range to 360. Now click the Reference Point button and move the point away from the center. The farther you offset it, the more the glow particles will spread out. Decrease the glow visibility a little, close the Props dialog, turn the Blurry Fill Emitter back on, and let's see what we have. Looks pretty good, so let's keep going. Choose the Blurry Fill Emitter and set its tint strength to 10% or so. That gives it a little bit of golden color to match the other particles. It's getting hard to tell how this is looking without having the real image appearing, so let's do that now. Instead of just turning on the background image at a later frame as we did in the first version of this emitter, we're going to fade a copy of the image in using a single particle, then turn on the background image. Load the miscellaneous 01 library and add a darken emitter to the stage. Then drag it in the hierarchy so it's under the blurry fill emitter and open the emitter properties dialog for it. Click the Particles tab, the Change Shape tab, and the New Shape button. Then select the 512 pixel version of the image that we created earlier. Click the Full Color option, then OK. Select the Colors tab and change the color gradient to white, then close the Properties dialog by clicking OK. Now we need to increase the size of this emitter and reposition it so it is aligned as closely as possible with the background image. It doesn't have to be perfect, but closer is better. Okay, let's get it fading in. 
Make the background image turn on around frame 32. Now use the visibility graph of the Spock emitter to make it fade in when appropriate. To me it looks like that should start fading in at frame 19. At this point, the main effect made up of the glow and spinners looks pretty good. It's important to get it looking as good as possible right now, because the next step is to duplicate the emitter and place it onto the other body parts. You want to make the background image start at frame 1 now so you can position things. Copy the emitter, then make sure you're at frame 1 and right click where the head might be and paste. Now reduce the height of this emitter so it covers the head only. Then tweak the size and number properties until you get the look you want for the head. Once you have the head looking good, copy it and paste it for the arms. Then use the angle property to align the emitter with the arm. Paste and align the emitter for whatever parts of Spock you think are appropriate. So here's the final result. Maybe not exactly the same as the reference clip, but looks pretty good and it can probably be modified to look even better. All of these emitters will be included in the May 2009 Emitter Library for Particle Illusion 3, and you can download the complete project files for this and all of the other Star Trek transporter examples from this video from our website, wondertouch.com. I hope seeing how I created these will give you more understanding of how to get the results you want with Particle Illusion 3. I'm Alan Lawrence. Thanks for watching.